and welcome from the Martin Center interview corner at the EPP Congress in Rotterdam. This interview is focusing on the disinformation threats to Europe after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And for this topic, we have a special guest who can give us first-hand experience and insights on such a difficult matter. So I'm happy to introduce Aura Salla head of EU affairs at Meta, previously known as Facebook. So Aura, this information started to be a threat to Europe way before, long before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. To what extent has Russian state-controlled disinformation increased since the war in Ukraine started? Let me start by saying that uh, actually when the war started, uh, we started to work 24-7 to making sure that the disinformation and misinformation doesn't spread on our platforms. I mean, uh, WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and uh, our teams have been very really working uh, non-stop making sure that we can we can tackle uh, this uh, inauthentic uh, behavior we see on our platforms. Uh, it, it can be more strategic and then we speak about disinformation or then it can be misleading information and these are the two things we want to separate. We have increased our fact checkers uh, in Ukraine and also in the EU. Uh, we have more people who are speaking Russian, who are speaking Ukrainian and uh, we actually made the decision to take down Russia Today and Sputnik even before the EU made this decision in their sanction package. And uh, how does Meta particularly define uh, state-controlled media and can this labeling uh, diminish the spread of disinformation? It actually can. Uh, we go through uh, these uh, publications, uh, news agencies, like what is their mission statement, how they actually produce their news, what are their news uh, sources, how reliable their, their uh, news are and how objectives, and then we label them. And uh, we, we will make sure that people don't see them on their news feeds. And uh, not only in Ukraine, but also in the EU and now also in the UK. And uh, how do your fact checkers uh, uh, verify emerging content uh, for Ukraine? Very practically speaking, uh, how do you operate? Yeah, we have, of course, our technology firsthand there because uh, the, the amount, amount of of uh, posts that we have on our platforms is enormous. But then on top of that, we have people reporting uh, some misinformation, disinformation, and uh, then we have fact checkers coming in and checking that uh, what is the content and should we label it or take it down. Uh, we never edit any of the content, as you know, but we label it so that people don't see it and we can also make sure that people will get uh, their news from reliable sources. And what are the challenges of this system? If you could uh, see something that can still be improved? Uh... I would say that uh, one thing that is super important for us is that people could also have access to our platforms in Russia because we strongly believe that opposition should be able to protest against, prote uh, protest against the war uh, on our platforms in Russia. We saw that when, when the war started, uh, Ukrainians actually started calling uh, taking WhatsApp calls to Russia uh, immediately, those uh, amount of calls increased enormously. And for us, it's very important that people in Russia have also access to this news and so, uh, from reliable sources, and also that they can have this con connection with Ukrainian people so that they would know what is actually going on in the country right now. We can see that people use VPN and access to our services there. And this is a challenge, but it's very important for us that people could use our platforms also in Russia. Indeed, the language issue is very important and uh, this information spread through English uh, has been in a way more effective uh, uh, and effectively uh, addressed uh, than, uh, you know, this information in other EU languages. Uh, so this brings me to the next uh, question. Is there a way to fix this imbalance? Yes, there is. Uh, we have hired much uh, more uh, fact-checker organizations and many more people to work on this disinformation in Russia in Ukrainian and also in other languages uh, in Central and Eastern European countries. I come myself from Finland and uh, the situation there is of course also quite tangible now after the NATO application. So I know what I'm 
speaking about uh, on behalf of smaller languages. So I know how important it is that we will have fact checkers more, uh, like uh, who know the, knows the smaller smaller languages. We are also funding organizations, NGOs who are working working for us, uh, trying to uh, decrease disinformation and misinformation. So let's wrap up our short interview. I know that this is a topic uh, on which we could speak for hours, but if you if you had to identify three uh, key points of improvement in order to be able to tackle this information, particularly online and on social media platforms effectively, what would you mention? I would mention that people would make sure that they also use our platform safely. Uh, they could uh, use this two-factor identifica identification, for example, on our platform making sure that uh, who they are friends with uh, and also that they uh, actively change their passwords, for example. So it's very important to know how to use these platforms. Uh, the second thing is that we need to still uh, increase the amount of fact checkers and people who actually know what is going on in the country. We are hiring more people who speak in Ukrainian, Russian, uh, and then, of course, making sure that people from Ukraine can access uh, access to reliable news sources, but not only that, but they can call to their friends and families in all EU member states, because we all know how many Ukrainians uh, we have in many of our member states right now. So this is where we are working 24-7, making sure that our platforms can help the situation and that we can, we can make sure that the disinformation and misinformation is not spreading on our platforms. Thank Thank you so much, uh, Aura, for being with us and thank you for your insights. Thank you all for watching and uh, keep following us on our social media pages for more content and more interviews.